In this video we're going to do what every photographer has done at this time of the year. The dandelion clocks are out and we're going to photograph one. It's that time of the year when the dandelion clocks come out and the dandelion clock is the seed head of the dandelion flower which is commonly known as a weed in this country. I have an absolute load of them in the garden so we're going to go and pick one and we're going to photograph it. But before we get there I want to give a shout out to my mate Glyn Dewitt, okay? Now he is a portrait photographer from the UK. He's got a, a great YouTube channel. I've learned a lot of stuff from Glyn that I'm implying into my portraits. I'm not confident enough to show them yet but perhaps later on in the year I might show you some of my portrait stuff. And basically He's decided he wants to do some landscape stuff and he's doing a similar thing to what I'm doing. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm doing macro photography, but I'm showing you the progress of me learning macro photography. So if you're new to the channel and you're seeing this video, that's what the channel is about. It's about learning macro photography and showing my progression from not being very good <laughs> to getting the shot that I want, which is a wild jumping spider photographed in the wild and printing out on one of these metal disc plates that are up here behind me. That's my goal, okay? And he's doing a similar project when it comes to landscape photography. He's decided he wants to do a bit of landscape photography. He wants to be able to have a landscape picture that he can hang in his living room. And most of his projects, he can't hang them in his living room because they are for clients. So he's doing a similar thing, but it's for landscape. So if you are interested in landscape photography, then head over to glindewis.com at his website you'll find all the stuff there about his new project that he's going to be spending over the next 12 months he's just put out a video on youtube of the first landscape shot that he's taken and i believe in 12 months after he learns all the everything about landscape he's going to be going back to the same location and taking a new shot with all the knowledge that he's got very similar to what we're doing here but it's landscape so if, again if you are into landscape photography then head over to glindewis.com you can have a look at that great series i'm going to be following along and I'm going to be enjoying every minute of it, okay? Now for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a dandelion clock from the garden and we're going to do all kinds of different um, pictures of it. So this video is going to be quite long, so I do apologise for that. If you do make it all the way through the video, then I want to thank you in advance for that, because it is going to be a long one. So for the background, I'm going to be using these paper that I got from the pound shop. Which caught my eye because let me get uh, let me get this green one out. They're they're glossy on one side and more of a matte colour on the other side, so we get to choose whether we want a, a reflective background or not, which is great. And to stop them flopping over like this, we're going to be holding them up with our bingo clips, uh, which are they're very similar to third arms. What I've done is I folded the paper along the edge, to give it more sturdiness, and then we can fold it a little bit over into like a circle or an arc, and that will stand up quite nicely on its own without uh, the need for it to fall over. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So what we need to do now is we need to get outside and find ourselves a dandelion clock. Let's go. Thank you. 
Now for this shoot, because we are shooting a static object, I'm going to use my Yongno speed light. I'm going to use the uh, the soft box on the speed light. Uh, it's a manual speed light, no uh, ETTL. So for this shoot, I'm going to be using my Wi-Fi card to transmit the images over to my iPad. That way, I have a, uh, a I have a bigger screen to see the preview images on there. Is this working? Yes, there we go. So, if you look here, you can see there I have a much bigger oh, this cable. I have a much bigger preview image that I can see now instead of having to look on the back of this camera. Settings wise, we're using 1 200th of a second, F8, ISO 100, 50mm uh, uh, nifty 50. You know, it's my favourite. On a 13mm extension tube with a Yongno manual flash at 132 power. So let's take a picture of this dandelion clock. I'm going to increase the power of the light by another stop. There we go. Okay, so we've got I'm going to OK image. Um, yeah, we've got an OK image. You know, it's a dandelion clock on a blue background. Brilliant. We want to take it in closer because everybody can shoot that. We want to get right in close on these seeds okay now normally i just want to make a, a point here normally i would be using a tripod to do this i know it's a nasty dirty word <laughs> i hate tripod but i would use my tripod to photograph this but unfortunately i only have one tripod and currently it's doing this so i can't use the tripod so if you have got a tripod use a tripod for this okay so i'm going to try using the 31 mil extension tube. So again, we're at uh, 200 for a second. I'm going to start at F8 and then I'm going to work my way down to see what I like. Okay, so that's looking good, but we've got the depth of field is too, too wide. If we have a look on our iPad here. Yeah, you can see there it's looking good. But our depth of field is too um, too big. So I'm going to drop my f-stop down. And I'm going to go extreme all the way down to the other side of the scale to my other favourite f-stop, which is 2.8. And I'm going to have to put the power of the flash down to compensate. And we'll take another shot. Wait for that to come through to the iPad. And we're a little bit too shallow. So let's bring it up to, let's try a five, six. And again, I have to recompensate the power on our flash. So I'm at 132 now on the power. That looks good on the back of the camera. Let's have a look on the iPad. Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking very good. Okay, so we're set up. Let's have a look what we got. Um, we've got a good working position. And what we want to do now is a uh, water bottle. And I have this, which is, um, it was a spray for aftershave, a portable aftershave spray. I took you have to shave out and fill it with water. So what I'm going to do now, just move the camera first. <laughs> Otherwise, if I start spraying with the camera there, Richard's going to kill me next time I go around his house. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to gently spray this. all over trying not to get too close to it because 
we don't want the seeds to fall off. Okay, so I'm not going to do the big water bottle yet. I'm just going to do the small one. We'll take a picture and see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. Alright, let's have a look on the uh, on the iPad. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that image. I'm gonna drop the uh, the F stop up a bit because you got the bird the water in there now. You want to capture a bit more of the water. I'm also gonna put the pair up on my flash. Okay, so you can see some nice water drops forming there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a, a bunch of images and I'll throw them up to the screen so you can see them there. Well, these are all out of camera and I haven't processed any of them. We'll be doing that on the next video. Okay, so this is all out of camera. Now we've done that, I want to get a little bit closer. Now we're not going to use the big water bottle until the very end because the big water bottle might destroy the uh, the dandelion clock structure and we don't want to do that straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of my extension tubes on. So we have all of the extension tubes on, which equals 52, 65 millimeters in extension tubes, okay? And now I want to get some close-up shots of the um, the water drops. I'm gonna have to drop the uh, I'm gonna have, have to put up the power on the flash because I've put more tubes on. So I'm gonna to go to one fourth power. I've no idea how this reads on the back of it. I'm gonna to have to go on YouTube and learn. But anyway, it's at one fourth. And we're going to do some detail shots of the water drops. Quick check. It's too powerful. We'll drop it to one eighth. And we'll do another another shot of that. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's drop the power again and we're going to drop the f-stop to five six because we're pushing in closer on the bubbles we want the uh, the depth of field to be a little bit narrower now it'll be nice actually let me just move this background a little bit closer and see if we can get some of that blue on there okay Oh yeah, it's starting to come through now. We're starting to get to a position that we like. Okay. And this is what I do on all of my macro shoots. I just develop the shot until it's to a position I really like. So you can see there, we're focusing on the one little dew drop just there. So I'm going to put the power up on the flash. See how that looks. Okay, so we're too much. We'll drop it back down. You can see how I'm placing that one dew drop right on the rule of thirds line. Oh look, I slightly missed the focus in there, and um, okay, and what I want to do is let's put. So the f-stop to 6.3. I want to try and get some more blue in here if I can. So I need to darken the background a little bit. And to do that, I just need to push it away a little bit. Okay. By pushing the background away, it will make it darker. Let's try it again.
Yeah, much better. Much better. It's less of a grey background now, more of a blue background. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've got some somewhere where, where I like. I'm going to go through again and take a bunch of pictures and I'll throw them up on the screen for you to see. And you can see I'm, I'm seeking it around. I'm just I'm looking around, moving back and forward, try and find a nice composi composition I like. So we're getting some beautiful shots now. Just remember these are all out of camera. In the next video, we will be punching the colour. The background is going to be a lot bluer. It's going to be a lot sharper. We'll put emphasis on the drops. Okay. But I want to show you the out of camera images so that you don't get fooled when you're out doing this and you're taking pictures and they're not turning out like the ones I'm showing you. Or I don't know, not not the ones I'm showing, like the ones that other YouTubers show you. It's because they've already processed the uh, the images, and it gives you a false sense of what your images are going to look like, and therefore you think. Now you take a look at those pictures, you think they're not coming out very good. They're not like what other people's pictures are, it's because they haven't been processed. Okay, so we will be processing the images on the next video, but for now we're going to carry on and take these shots and get a few more. I might see what it looks like from above. Can't see it being very good though, but let's have a go. Yeah, it's not that bad actually. What we want to do now is we want to spray the larger water drops on there, okay? So again, I'm going to put the camera out the way so that Richard hasn't got anything to shout at me about. I'm just going to spray this. And we're not going to adjust any of the settings. We're going to go straight back in and photograph it exactly as it was before. Put the background back because I forgot to do that. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, have a look at that. So, again, I'm just going to go through and... Um, I'll just sort this background out because it's kind of popping over onto my dandelion clock. Please. If you find your background you or your paper goes doing it, just fold it a little bit and it will sort itself out. But I'm going to go through, I'm going to photograph a bunch of images again. Same settings as before. All the settings I'm putting up onto the screen for you so you can see the settings. So again, I'm searching around in my viewfinder for a composition. When I find one, I'll just take a picture. Another thing you can do is you can actually put a flower in the background and that will actually get focused in the drops and that's what we'll give a go now. We're going to go and get a dandelion. Since it's a dandelion clock, we're going to use a dandelion and we'll see what we can do. Right, so I'm going to place the dandelion flower behind our clock. Oh, just spotted something. One of the um, seeds has just fallen. I just want to get a shot of it. Okay. That's certainly an interesting shot. Anyway, back to what we were doing. I need to line these guys up now. Our dandelion clock is starting to fall apart. These they don't last very long when you're doing these photographs, I tell you. Turn it round so it's on the back side. 
block off the seeds and of course everything's wet bend him down a bit okay let's see what that gives us same settings as before guys Okay, he needs to be higher. Put him up higher. Go. Yeah, okay. Get something there. It's the first time I've tried focusing uh, something in an actual dew drop. It's quite hard. I have to say, it is quite hard. Let's do some more. Ah, so there we go, we've got some um, nice images there of the dandelion clock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick off some of these seeds at the front. So that I can get inside it. And we can see the, um, the inside of the, uh, the dandelion clock. There we go. I'm going to put the uh, the dandelion flower behind it again. I think the yellow mixed in with the blue is working quite well. And now we're going to take some more pictures of the centre of the dandelion clock. Let's bring him in closer. We get some nice detail on that shot. I'm gonna do another one. Now for this shot, I'm gonna bring my f-stop all the way down. I'm gonna come down to 1.8, and I'm gonna drop the power to the minimum of setting, which is 128, and we're gonna go for another shot. Oh, I know what I said. You see that? I just spotted something that I want to get. Okay, so we're going to go to F2.8. Try that. I think a second tripod might be on my uh, wish list on Amazon. Might buy me a nice carbon fibre one that's nice and light. Yeah, I like those. I'm going to take a couple more of them. Yeah. Now this goes back to my five tips of better macro photography. I tell you to always play with your f-stop. I never shoot on the same f-stop, I'm always adjusting it because you can get some great results just by dropping the f-stop down or up. That's looking okay. What I want to do now though, is I want to get a single drop right in the middle where the, um, where the seeds used to be. I want to put a drop right there. Now to do that, I'm going to get a syringe. I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much about the syringe because snowflakes. Okay. If you 
if you want to know how I'm doing this, it's with a syringe. So I'm going to place this right in the middle there. And unfortunately, I can't film this. Okay. So we've got a single drop right in the middle, and we're going to take a picture of that now. I'm going to focus right on the drop. Have a look at that it's looking okay so i'm going to take a few more shots because the more shots you got the more chance you get a really good shot so we're going to take a few more shots i'll throw them up onto the screen for you now the last shot i want to do is i want to get a single dandelion block or seed. It's gonna be hard to do, but let's try and get it done. Okay. I'm gonna put a drop right in the middle of the, uh, the, the seed. Go. Yep. And now I'm going to take a picture of that now. Same settings as before. Okay. I think you can admit that's pretty boring without the yellow flower in the background. So let's put that in as well. Okay, let's get this one done. Okay. I need to increase my f-stop for this one, I think. I'm going to go to 6, 3. Increase the power on our flash by two stops. And again, I can zoom in on my iPad to see if we have focus. So for the last last thing of this particular section, I'm going to put my f-stop to 8 again. Uh, increase the power back to 1 16th. And we're going to take the same shot again. In fact, I'm also I'm going to increase my Shutter speed to 200 as well, okay? So that's it, that's it for this video. Now I do apologize for it being long, but um, yeah. So I think that's gone very well. I think we've got some great images there. We won't know until the next video when we go to process these images exactly what they're like. Now I'm not going to look at them when I'm producing the video. And all I'm going to do is just use the JPEGs that we've photographed. Send them over to Premiere to do the video. That's all. I'm not going to actually um, edit any. Okay. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found something useful in it. If you have, leave me a comment down below. Give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't done already. Click that bell icon to get notified of when a new video goes live. My name is Stuart Wood. I'll see you on the next video.